This week in Nerf, is YouTube trying to push Nerf creators off of the platform? We got that and more to talk about. I'm Jangula, this is your source for first party, third party, and community Nerf news. Now before we get into that main topic, I want to talk about some potentially happier things, I suppose we can say. Uh, starting off, a project was released by Flygonio on Reddit called Rectify, and this is a 3D printed flywheel blaster that uh, is meant for brushed flywheel motors, which is nice. It has, as you'll notice here, a bit of an FDL look to it. It's got the horizontal, horizontal flywheel cage, which is, uh, I think, only the second dart-based horizontal flywheel cage we have, at least in recent history. Um, so it's interesting to have that as an option, an open source option for those that want to build or create their own blasters and add whatever components in they want. This isn't going to be as high tech or as top of the line as say an FDL2 with all the brushless tech and the control options on all that kind of stuff. But I think it's very interesting and very cool that we're having these more community offerings that are open source and people can do what they want with. We just had the Foxfire and now we've got the rectify and and who knows what else is coming but i think it's really cool that flagonio went ahead and set up the motor cage or flywheel cage so that it could take just about any uh aftermarket flywheel that's currently being made now what will be made in the future we don't know but i believe it it, it caters to a wide variety and should take 130 to 180 sized motors also can use a pusher motor which i believe uh, you may require some alterations to the shell if you want to use an un well 180 pusher motor, but 130 should fit fine. Uh, there's some things I really like about this project. I, again, open source, so that's really, really cool. Um, I like the fact it has a stock point. That's a very simple thing. Very simple thing, but I like that it has a stock point. I think that's fantastic, and it's just a, one of those little basic things you get but what's also cool is uh they went ahead and added an extra i believe stock option that you can print that has a larger battery trace if you want to use a bigger bulkier battery for a longer game or or whatever reason that is an option and that is super cool so i love these kinds of things and i love just that people are creating things for the hobby and the community. And I think this is a very interesting addition that's worth taking a look at. So if you want to try and print one out on your own and, and mess around with some things, this is an option. Links will be down below. Like I said, I look forward to seeing how this evolves over time. Next up, really quick, I just want to mention that the Adventure Force Ball Blasters, both the Titanium and the Accelerator, uh, appear to be out at Walmart now. People have been posting that they've been finding them, and uh, actually Buff Daddy Nerf, who I feel like I talk about on here all the time, or link his stuff all the time, the man's very good at getting his hands on things early and game testing them and, and posting reviews, so... I mean, I, why not link to him if he does good work? So uh, his, his Accelerator review is already up on Blaster Hub. I'll have that linked down below as well. But I just want to let you know really quick before we get into our main story, I guess we'll call it for the week, um, that those links will be down below. And take a look at your Walmarts. If you have one near you, you may be able to find one of these Blasters if you are looking for one. Now, let's get talking to the thing that everybody's been talking about, it seems like. And that is the changes to the YouTube Partnership Program. Uh, several people have been posting about these, whether it's on Facebook, Reddit, YouTube. There's multiple videos. Aldos did a stream. Drac did a video. Uh, posts from all, all different kinds of people about this situation. And really briefly, what happened is over the next 30 days from now, essentially, uh, a lot of people will be getting removed from the YouTube Partner Program and an update is happening to the requirements for the YouTube Partner Program. Uh, you will now have to have gotten or gained a thousand subs and had 4,000 hours of watch time through your videos, which is a significant step up from just 10,000 total views, which it was prior. So the thing that everybody's been talking about and focused on is the money aspect. When you become a partner on YouTube, you can monetize your videos, which is nice. It's, it's, it's a, something that makes you feel like you've accomplished something, perhaps. Um, and those little bits that you'll get from, from videos here and there can add up to help you do a project for a video or things like that. And that's all great. Uh, it's a bummer that people are losing access to that because it can be a nice kind of uh, motivator, I suppose you could say. But that's not what I want to talk about. I feel like 
too much conversation has gone about the money side of it. And that's, to me, not really where the focus should be. Because the amount of money you're making as a small channel is not much. It's really, it's, it's very, very little. So that's not really the focus. The focus to me is the fact that these channels, or rather channels that are striving to hit that partnership program status, will not be gaining access to tools that will help them grow their channel better and quicker and easier until they manage to get to this new threshold. And that to me is a major, major issue. Uh, the big ones for me, which incidentally, the people that already achieve partnership status but will be losing it, will still have access to, thankfully, is end cards and cards. So if I put a card right up here, then you know you can click on that. People won't be able to do that until they hit that new threshold. And that can really, really help people in getting viewers to keep watching their channel, keep going to other videos and click through and maintain that interest in the channel. Also the end cards, when I say, hey, go check out the mod of the week and it, you know, I go over here and I put the, or the video of the week is right over here. They won't be able to do that. Um, so it makes it really, really hard or harder for those channels to continue to grow their audience in a, in a very organic way. And that I don't like. There are also other issues with things like analytics and APIs and whatnot. It's harder to access certain things, I believe, unless it's changed. Granted, it's been a while since before I was a partner, um, but I remember not having access to all the tools. And so to me, it's those tools. The loss of those tools is going to make it so much harder for these small niche channels, which let's be honest, most of the Nerf community is small niche channels. We have a couple channels that you could say are part of the hobby side or the community side of Nerf, and that's, you know, Drac and Coop. Those are the two channels that are over 100,000 subs, really, that are super active, that post a lot of stuff, and uh, are still hobby-oriented or community-oriented to one degree or another. After that, you've got channels like Make Test Battle kind of creeping up on, uh, on 100,000 subs, and then, you know, uh, Bubba Lolo, Walcom, etc. at around 60,000. After that, it jumps way down to 20,000, 10,000, and a ton of quality, good, entertaining content is made by channels with 1,000, 2,000, less than 1,000 subs. And those are the channels that are really going to be hurt by this because they lose access to those tools. I'm not even talking about the money side. I just want people to have access to tools to help them grow their channels easier and better. And that's just, that's the part to me that really irks me and gets to me. And it's the part that nobody's talking about. Um, so much of the focus is on the money and I just, I want everybody to have access to the tools, the analytics, the APIs, everything they need to understand their audience and how to better create content for that audience. So. That's my problem, my frustration with this whole situation as it is right now. And I wanted to share that really briefly with you because it does seem like we're kind of a strange community. We, are, we aren't the largest community. Yes, we have channels with 500,000 plus six, 700,000, however much Coop is at right now, uh, viewers, but not all of those viewers know how to get to the other channels yet. And it's gonna take time and since we are playing with toys that can be misrepresented as guns or mislabeled as guns, it puts this on a very, we're in a very strange place where YouTube with a lot of what's going on right now may not want our content, even though we are family friendly content, because it's easy for them to not have to figure it out. And that's frustrating. And that's, that's something that I don't like because it can stifle the growth of this hobby. To me, one of the best ways to get people into this hobby and invested and interested is to share it through video because you can share so much. So many cool things, the mods, the gameplay, all the crazy ideas people have that are just so cool to see. And that to me is just, it's a shame that it seems like YouTube is not on our side right now. Maybe they'll change in the future. Maybe they'll adjust things to help us out. But I know I personally have to go in for manual review of many of my uh, videos. And I mean, I just do like gameplay, news about things, mod workbench type stuff. And uh, you know, it's, it's clear that my channel is family friendly, but I still have to do it. And that's, it's just an unfortunate place that YouTube is at currently, but fingers crossed that they will 
adjust and fix and reset their course to a better place for niche communities like ours. Uh, I know you, you all have probably listened to everybody else until you've just been zoned out on it, but I wanted to share my brief thoughts and another side of it that I think people aren't addressing quite as much. That said, let's move on to something much more fun, and that is the mod of the week. And that comes to us from Nivitz01, and this is the Maxim 24. This is a semi-automatic flywheel rocket launcher. It's magnificent. I love it. I couldn't, as soon as I saw it, I said, yes, that. That is the mod of the week. I don't care what else anyone else does. This is the mod of the week. Uh, it, it uses an internal magazine that he's constructed himself, and it makes, it uses homemade rockets, and it has, I, I think it uses three flywheels based on the motor cage in the front, or the flywheel cage in the front, which actually he provided the STL files to me, uh, links to, which I will have down below if you want to try and make something like this. Um, I'm only showing you the one picture, but he's got video and GIFs and all that in the link below for it. Go check it out. This thing is absolutely awesome. I think it's such a cool, such a fun, unique idea that I couldn't not share it. I think it's so fantastic. So go check it out. Click the link. Please, you will not be disappointed by it. It is fantastic, and I hope he does more with this. Uh, let's go ahead and move on, though, to the video of the week, which comes to us from Bradley Phillips. And this is one of his gameplay videos. This one, he goes 14-1 and one in a sweet, sweet game. Now, he has some of the more interesting gameplay footage out there because he uses a scope cam. And I think this is so cool. This is something that uh, really didn't feel was necessary several years ago when I tried to use multicam setups and had like a blaster cam, a barrel cam, and all that. And uh, because of how fast things moved and everything, and it didn't have a zoom, it didn't seem right, it didn't work for me. But then, Bradley Phillips, with his long-range style, has made the scope cam work. And this has actually re-motivated me to try and do this again and try and go back to multicam and, and do that. So, like, I am absolutely stoked with his footage and the way he does things. And um, seeing his play style and that just extra value into the video. And I, I think it's really cool. And uh, I hope we continue to see more interesting things in the gameplay community in terms of videos and continue to push each other to do more and do better and, and just be more engaging because that to me is the way we share and evolve and get more people engaged in that side of the hobby is the gameplay videos because they show how much fun we really have out there. And Bradley Phillips consistently has entertaining gameplay videos and good testing videos for things like accuracy and high-powered blasters. So that is something you should definitely go check out. I loved watching this gameplay video. And that video is going to be right here because we now are at the end of this week's episode. Let me know what you thought of everything. The YouTube issues, the new Adventure Force blasters, the Rectify, the Maxim 24, all of it. Please let me know. I love hearing from all of you. And if you're new to the channel and enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that subscribe button for more in the future. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jangular, and I'll see you next time.